The Vickers 6-ton Mark E tank was a light tank developed by Vickers Armstrong in 1928 for commercial purposes. Two different variants of this tank were produced. The first variant, known as the Type A, had two turrets in a side-by-side -side configuration, with a Vickers machine gun mounted in each of them. The second variant, known as the Type B, had a single turret armed with a 47mm main gun as well as a coaxial Vickers machine gun. Their armor consisted of riveted plates with a thickness of up to 25mm in the front, and they were powered by an 80-90 to 90 horsepower Armstrong Sidley four-cylinder gasoline engine, allowing them to reach a top speed of up to 35 km per hour. The Vickers 6-ton Mark E's would be one of the most successful commercial tanks of the 1930s and were sold to various countries all over the world. In this video, we will take a closer look at these tanks in Chinese service. The Chinese government ordered 20 of the Mark E Type B tanks during the mid-1930s, prior to the outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War. They would not purchase any of the twin-turreted Type A's, although Japan would purchase one or two of them for testing, with one seen here next to a captured Chinese Panzer I and 6-ton Type B tank. The first batch of 12 tanks arrived in China in November of 1934 and had been assigned serial numbers ranging from VAE-800 to VAE-811. The serial numbers for each tank could be found on a data plate attached to the front of the hull, which was written in both English and Chinese. An interesting point to note is that while the English side of the data plate identifies the tanks as Vickers Armstrong Light Tank Mark E's, the Chinese characters translates to Vickers Carden Lloyd 6-ton tanks. The second batch of four tanks arrived in May of 1935 and had serial numbers ranging from VAE-845 to VAE-848. The final four tanks were delivered to the Chinese in October of 1936, although some sources suggest an earlier date, in December of 1935. The tanks from the final batch numbered from VAE-1148 to VAE-1151. These four tanks were slightly different from the other 16 as they each had a Marconi SB-4A radio installed behind the turret, which was something that the Chinese had requested. These four radio tanks would serve as command tanks being used by the company and platoon commanders. There were also some minor external differences, such as the protected headlights found on the command tanks, which differed from the exposed headlights of the regular tanks. A few sources have suggested that another 12 vehicles may have been ordered in late 1937 after the start of the war with Japan. However, whether this order was actually placed and if it was, whether any of the tanks were delivered is still up for debate as there is little evidence to support their existence. Since these tanks were all of the Type B variant, they were all armed with a 47mm main gun as well as a 7.7mm coaxial Vickers machine gun, although some sources suggest that the machine guns could have been an 8mm variant. They were operated by a crew of three, a driver, a gunner, and a commander. Ammunition for the 47mm guns were purchased from the British as well. The first order was for 3,200 rounds, followed soon after by another order for 6,000. Additional orders would also be made with the third batch consisting of 2,860 rounds and a possible fourth batch of 2,400. The Vickers Mark E tanks were initially provided to the 1st Company of the 2nd Transportation Regiment's Fighting Vehicle Battalion. The 1st Company, also known as Tiger Company, consisted of three platoons. Each platoon had five Mark E tanks, while an additional tank was provided to Company HQ. The entire battalion was soon transferred to the Jiaozi or Transportation Academy and renamed the Fighting Vehicle Training Battalion. In May of 1937, just prior to the start of hostilities with Japan, the battalion would then be incorporated into the newly formed National Revolutionary Army's Armored Regiment, with the battalion once again being known as the Fighting Vehicle Battalion. Around this time, a number of Mark E tanks would find their way into the second company in order to bolster their firepower as they had previously been equipped entirely with Vickers Carden Lloyd light amphibious tanks. In January of 1938, following the Chinese defeat at Shanghai and Nanking, the surviving Vickers Mark E tanks were then incorporated into the 1st Fighting Vehicle Battalion of the mechanized 200th Division's 1149th or 1150th Regiment. When the 200th Division was converted back to a regular infantry unit in late 1938, these tanks were likely assigned to the newly formed Armored Regiment of the 11th Army, later known as the 5th Army. The Chinese Mark E tanks were all painted in the standard Vickers four-tone camouflage pattern. Initially, the 16 standard tanks all had the Chinese character for Tiger painted in white on the left side of the turret, denoting the company that the tanks belonged to. This would result in the first company often being referred to as Tiger Company. They were also assigned a two-digit vehicle number ranging from 51 to 66. These numbers were painted in white on the right side of the turrets. 
A red circle, square, or shield was also painted around the characters and numbers, denoting the platoon that the tanks belonged to. As the four radio tanks were delivered slightly later, they were devoid of any markings and only had the standard four-tone camouflage. Their markings would remain the same until after early 1938 when they were incorporated into the 200th Division. In this new unit, changes to the markings included moving the vehicle numbers from the right side of the turret to the front of the hull. Nationalist insignias were also added to the tanks, with one being located next to the vehicle number and another on the left side of the turret, replacing the Tiger character. The first action that the tank saw wasn't against the Japanese in 1937, but was instead during the Xi'an incident in 1936, when Chiang Kai-shek was held hostage by two of his subordinates, Zhang Xueliang and Yang Hucheng, who wanted Chiang to focus on forming a united front against Japan, instead of trying to defeat the communists. In response, Chinese forces loyal to Chiang set out to engage the troops who were holding him captive. On the evening of December 20th, the Vickers Mark E tanks, part of the Transportation Academy's fighting vehicle training battalion at the time, were tasked with supporting the advance of the Central Military Academy Training Division's 2nd Regiment towards Shishui Station, located roughly 80 kilometers west of Xi'an. As a foreshadowing some of the issues that Chinese tanks would face later on during the war with Japan, the lack of effective communication between the infantry and armor proved to be a problem. During this particular assault, poor communication resulted in a friendly fire incident where tank shells landed among the advancing troops of the training division, killing two soldiers and injuring multiple others. Still, this assault was considered a success and the defenders were dislodged from Shishui Station. Following negotiations, Chiang Kai-shek was released five days later on December 25, 1936. The following year, Full-scale war broke out with Japan, and in early August, a number of Vickers Mark E tanks from 1st Company, along with the Vickers Carden Lloyd amphibious tanks of 2nd Company, were sent towards Baoding in northern China in order to strengthen the troops stationed there. However, before they got to see any action, they were ordered to move back south to support the Chinese troops in Shanghai. Once again, issues such as poor communication and coordination with the infantry plagued the armored units. These factors, along with a number of poor command decisions being made, would cause the armored regiment to suffer some heavy losses in Shanghai, with both the 1st and 2nd Company commanders being killed in action. However, unlike what many sources suggest, not all of the Marquis tanks were lost, and evidence suggests that only three of the tanks were captured by the Japanese during the battle. The first tank was captured when it got stuck on the sloped riverbanks of the Yangshupu area while supporting an infantry assault. The crew managed to escape, but the tank was captured by the Japanese, who set it on fire, mistakenly believing the crew members to still be inside. The second tank was captured when it got separated from the infantry and drove straight into Japanese positions around Huishan Wharf. The lone tank was initially able to cause heavy casualties among the Japanese marines defending the area, as they had no reliable anti-tank weapons. However, Japanese reinforcements brought with them a number of artillery pieces as well as a Vickers Crosley armored car, and using the various streets and alleys in the area, they quickly surrounded the Chinese tank, setting up ambushes at intersections and attacking it from multiple directions, eventually knocking it out and killing all three crew members inside. It should be noted that this tank was one of the four command tanks equipped with a radio behind the turret and was personally commanded by the second company commander, Major Zheng Shaoyan. The third tank was much easier to capture compared to the other two. Vehicle 58 was spotted by a Japanese reconnaissance unit who had snuck through the Chinese lines. The few Chinese soldiers guarding the tank quickly retreated after a short engagement, and the Japanese were able to tow it back to their lines. The Japanese would initially display these captured tanks in Shanghai before bringing them back to Japan to be displayed with other captured Chinese equipment. Following the Battle of Shanghai, the remaining Mark E tanks would make their way back to the Chinese capital of Nanjing, or Nanking, where they, along with the majority of the armored regiment, were then evacuated to Xiangtan in Hunan province as the Japanese drew near. In January of 1938, they would be incorporated into the newly formed, mechanized 200th Division, which was created in Xiangtan on the basis of the remaining vehicles and equipment of the armored regiment, as well as Soviet equipment which had just started entering the country. Together with a number of CV-35s, they would be assigned to the 1st and 2nd Companies of the 1149th or 1150th Regiment's 1st Fighting Vehicle Battalion. As mentioned earlier, around this time, the markings on the Vickers Mark E's were updated to a pattern similar to those found on other armored vehicles in the 200th Division, with the vehicle numbers being moved to the front and nationalist insignias being added. These Vickers Mark E's were recorded to have participated in the Battle of Lanfeng, where another 3-4 to four tanks were lost. Around November of 1938, when the 200th Division was converted to a regular infantry division, 
Its vehicles and armor were then used to form the Armored Regiment of the 11th Army, which would later be renamed the 5th Army. The Vickers Mark E tanks were likely included in this unit and continued to serve throughout the Second World War, possibly participating in some of the famous battles like the Battle of Quilun Pass. However, records of these tanks after 1938 seems to be quite scarce. Many of the Mark E's were likely passed down to second-line units and provided to academies such as the Mechanization Academy in Hongjiang, Hunan Province, to be used as training vehicles. What happened to them after is unknown, although some appear to have survived the war. It has been reported that a few of the tanks may have participated in the Chinese Civil War, with at least one supposedly being brought by the nationalists to Taiwan after their defeat. One of the last confirmed sightings of a Chinese Vickers Mark E tank would be in April of 1952, not in China, but at a scrapyard in Korea, Japan. The photos seen here are from the Australian War Memorial Archives and shows the command tank that the 2nd Company commander, Major Zheng Shaoyan, was killed in when it was knocked out during the Battle of Shanghai 15 years earlier. At the time that the photos were taken, this tank was in the process of being taken apart for scrap, a sad and undeserving end for a historically significant tank that had been through so much.